Okay, and for our final topic tonight of why should anyone play riffs? Who are we starting with? We're starting with Malachi. Uh, why should anyone play riffs? Tips and advice for new players. All right, Malachi. What advice would you give to someone looking to start playing riffs for the first time? Grab yourself a chord book. Start with that. Your first character. Keep it simple. Probably go for something like like a wilderness scout. Don't go for like a glitter boy or a cyborg. Keep your first character simple. And yeah, that's all I can give right now. Don't get okay. don't get over don't go in over your head. That's mine. I mean, my first character was I think a bounty hunter from New West. Okay, since you're talking about characters, um, how do you recommend new players approach character creation to make the most of the first Rifts experience? Uh, I'd say their big thing is going to be your skill selection. Read all the skills, make sure you're understanding them for the most part, and pick the ones that you think would fit how you envision your character. I can't wait to read that later. Oh uh, no, you know I'm gonna do it now. That one. <laughs> Dog for four ninety nine says, "I love the stream so much. I want to have the stream's babies." That reminds me, the worst concert I ever went to in my life was a Pearl Jam, and I forget who opened for him concert back in nineteen ninety three, four, or whatever it was. And I remember somebody screaming, Eddie better, I want your babies. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? See, now I did it. I'm like, what the heck is wrong with you? Um, but thank you, Lock Dog, for that $4.99. Um, hey, you know what? At least I'm glad he said he wants to stream babies and not one of ours. Just saying. All right. So, uh, Frank, moving up to you. You're muted, sir. Just in case you didn't know, you probably know. What advice would you yeah. give to someone looking to start playing riffs for the first time? ease into the system um rifts has been been maligned with um the the moniker that it is gonzo play style um it's critiqued like that for for i suppose probably a reason back in the day because it is uh, well i mean it's very easy for you to get into gonzo style but i, I like to say start with a small adventure a one shot with a predetermined first blush um, like what is Rift about? Um, pick a pick a, a hook, line, and sinker, and work with that. Um, pick a major conflict. Okay, hold on, back back up, back up a yeah. second. I know what you're talking about. I'm sure these guys know what you're talking about. But yeah, for yeah. those who don't know what hook, line, and sinker is, yeah, it's uh, okay. So hook, line, and sinker. Uh, <laughs> hook, line, and sinker. Um, if <laughs> if you were good, if you were to go back into the index one and two. Uh, they talk about hook, line, and sinker. It's it, it, like Palladium does not necessarily produce modules that like a D20 system does. They produce a short version of a hook, which is like what should the players necessarily be interested in, a line which necessarily grabs onto the characters that says this is why you should be interested in the hook, and then the sinker is what is the end point of the adventure? So it's a very, very short form version of an adventure idea. Mm -hmm. So pick a hook, line, and sinker, maybe tie it into a major conflict, be it the Tolkien War, be it the Minion Wars, be it the Coalition War against- Running away from some people trying to grab you as slaves. Absolutely. There are any number of things that you could tie into or, or necessarily just be on the edges of. You don't necessarily need to be part of the coalition war campaign against Tolkien. You could be part of a scouting mission towards the Zydekix or towards any other number of bad guys that you can pick and, and, and off you go. Um, Limit your campaign to your backyard. This enhances the immersion of the players into, like, I, I know about that gas station. Absolutely, we're going to go check out what's going on there. By the way, two blocks down is the entrance to the metro station. We're going downtown. 
we're going to go down and we're going to dive into the metro station. We're going to walk from this station all the way to downtown and we're going to find out what's what. Um, and then as with any new, like, like uh, any new system that you introduce to your players, keep an open mind. Um, the idea that you're, you're trying to introduce a new system to your players, make it easy for them to get into it, make the adventure simple enough for them to grab onto, and then just, just have fun with it. Um, if you decide to let your players go full on gonzo, and by that I mean hack and slash their way through the adventure, well, let them hack and slash through their adventure. If that allows them to look at the rifts system as an alternative to the D20 system that most everybody hooks into, Bob's your uncle. I, I, I will all reinforce this. Um, give them the opportunity to have fun in something other than the D20 system. Um, because the, everyone understands what the D20 system is. And, and, and by giving them that option space to have fun with something other than Pathfinder or D&D 5e or whatever the new version's called, um, give them that opportunity to have fun with it, and, and then they'll come back to it again. And then you can build on that from there. Okay. Uh, can you share some common mistakes new players make in Rifts and how to avoid them? In all honesty, it's probably allow yourself to go too wide, too far. Um, we talked about this earlier. You know, you, you can understand the system one mile wide, one inch deep. There's there's a certain there's a certain expectation that the GM should be able to limit what the players can do, uh, limit what the player expectations are, so that they have a much more uh, immersive experience. And it allows them the chance to get a better understanding of what the Rift's uh, Palladium system is about. So that they're not kind of comparing it to the D20 or the, the 2D20 or the D6 over here or the D10 system over there. You want to get them immersed in the world building that Kevin provided for Rift's, which is absolutely an easy hook for anybody to get into. Um, I, I don't think this is a hard sell, especially if you tie into the local area for the players that are that are trying to develop these characters and these adventures. If you tie into the local community, the local uh, urban setting that is that is convenient to you, play with that as that 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 is your playground. That is your sandbox develop what your characters can look at as ter in terms of adventure settings and let them have fun and build from there. And, and, and more times than not say yes. Okay. Allow them. The, like, you want to go into the Metro station. Okay, go. What are you going to do? Ah, right, we're going to walk from one Metro station to the next. Okay. You walk to the next Metro station. All right. And, and, and built that's from a there. great place to have an ambush set up well again not maybe Absolutely. not a coalition ambush but a bug ambush or you know, yep. some well, uh, some underground db that's trying to stay away from not trying to be discovered yeah absolutely and 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 it might be completely unrelated to the adventure that you have initially presented my favorite now they've, type. Got the now they've got an opportunity to develop well, like what what is your option space? Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to fight through, or are you going to pick it and bypass? And you're going to go up to the you know, work up. out a deal. Now there's yet another side something to do on here. Absolutely. As you trying to, yep. absolutely, there are a myriad of choices to make. Now that's part of the adventure development phase. That's part of those those goose eggs that I talk about in terms of adventure design. Um, you have to be able to understand what the characters are probably going to do, but give them option space to, to develop from there. Don't railroad them in terms of uh, what it is that they have to do to continue with the adventure and, and, and build from there. Allow them the opportunity to develop the adventure as they see it. 
Mm-hmm. And you as the game master have to be conversant enough with the system and capable enough to deal with the sidebars, the tangents, whatever it is that your players present and go from there. This is why I, I mean, I use this term. I don't know if there's a better term for it, but I use the term that I call timelines because I don't like to railroad them into I'm forcing you to do this, but there are consequences for taking on this action or not taking on that action. Some are big, some are little. Yes, I have a main storyline, if you want to call it that, in my games, because that's the type of game I like to run. I like to run the big epic Lord of the Rings or Dragonlance Chronicles, whatever, but there's also a bunch of mini stuff going on as well. If you don't care that the world's getting taken over by the Dragon High Lords, let's go do some of this other stuff over there. I I don't care, Um, but I absolutely love those things. Yep, the decision's on you, but the world is going to keep moving and i think riffs is just something that you can have so many hundreds of things going on what the game's been in production since 1990 right well how many years has the actual world progressed like five yeah nine nine okay nine nine so, years yeah. so so in 1990, 2000, 2010, 2000. So in 25 years almost 25 years the game has moved forward nine years there's a lot of stuff going on in, in that time. Like, like, and it's not a lot of time and that's great. So you don't have to worry about epochs and so forth. It's just, oh, there's so much you can do with that. But, um, all right. Let's see. Who did I start with? I don't even know. You start with Malachi. Malachi. Okay. Well then it's your turn. Uh, Timothy, let's uh, ask the question again here. What advice would you give to someone looking to start playing riffs for the first time? Uh, pick, pick, well, pick a simple character. Uh, make it your own. Um, you, I, you know, my Saturday morning games, I try to do it every other Saturday. That went a little wackadoodle because we went totally weird. But and that was part of uh, Frank's say yes, you know. Um, don't be make it, yeah, make it yourself so that make it your own. That you're comfortable with. If you want, to, if, if you and the GM are go, okay doing wackadoodle, do it. Um, if if you want a more serious game, be more then make it a, make it a more serious game. Um, yeah, uh, when I said in a morning game, uh, we, I infused cartoons with the players. I've got one player that's uh, Thomas the Tank Engine. The, that's because the pre-made character was Thomas the the tank smith so he goes i'm thomas the tank engine great and uh we threw in door the explorer and diego diego and now we're off fighting the coalition states that's being controlled by the holy rodent empire down in dinosaur swamp so but you have you know make it your own have fun and it, the skills the, the rules aren't that difficult you know introduce the the rules uh, as needed, combat skills. You don't have to be over. You don't have to go deep into lore right off the bat. What resources, you know, like books, online content, communities, whatever, do you suggest for beginners to get acquainted with the Rifts universe? Um, the core book, primarily the, the you know whatever. Well, the book that your character is going to be out of the core book for most new players uh online resources excuse me <sighs> um i wouldn't necessarily dive too deep into online resources to to avoid you know, the constant back and forth that i mean heck you've even seen in our own a little bit in our own chat but um um you're I, fired I was, yeah well yeah. How about Legion of Myth? Hey, okay, watch Legion of Myth. <laughs> <laughs> There's no riffs content here at all that none, people can learn all. anything from. None whatsoever. <laughs> don't don't watch character and dice to make learn how to make a character. There, it, it, well. It's actually a good one. You could shout it out yourself as well. Yeah, especially know. when it comes to character creation, because there are a lot of complaints about character. I think they're mistaken complaints about character creation. Uh, absolutely. So there are places that you can go. Uh, the Palladium Books has its own online forums. I they're better now because they because I think I think it was Wayne went in and cleaned them up. But up until about a year or so ago, they were really toxic. 
Um, yeah. There are Discord communities out there. There are Facebook communities out there. I've got a Gilded community nobody uses that's out there. Um, you know, so I mean, there there are there are places out there. Um, books. I think you said good. Yeah, read the book. Somebody said in chat said that first thing you need to do is read the book. But I mean, some people like I learned not Dungeons Dragons, but Dragonland specifically more out of the novels. Yeah, the novels are enjoyable. I okay. If they're great for you, they're great for you. Um, it, it, that's just. I mean, they don't have to be necessary. It's just, but there are resources out there where folks can go to. Uh, yeah. to <laughs> when we say it, L O M, yeah, that's probably true. All right, uh, we now we're going to. Oh, uh, I think I started some comments. Let me make sure here. Do, 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 do. Uh, well, first of all, Full Metal Dragon says the Coalition are the heroes of humanity and the good guys of America. America. I'm going to get some hate mail for that one, but you know, every time. <laughs> If it's yeah, not heathen there. dog, it's somebody else. But that's, I get, I get it though. I, 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 yeah, we've talked about that enough. We've got enough videos out there on why we find that the coalition is understandable, even if uh, you know they're basically the bad guys. Uh, Law dog for five dollars says common mistakes for new players are failing to unlearn D and D five e when playing Palladium. I have not run into that personally. What I've run into similarly but differently is people not even willing to give Palladium a try because they want everything to be 5e. Yeah, absolutely. If it isn't a D20 system, they, they don't want to talk about it. It's, it. it's a problem, but that's also the pervasiveness of the D20 system because of the OGL and the success that they had after that. Regardless of what you think about WotC and, and everything else, um, the OGL D20 um, provided a mainstream success model for TTRPGs and and uh, Rifts. I think uh, Platinum writ large is in a position to hit a very successful market strategy if if they were if they were able to penetrate into the, you know, the, the fact that the OG, not, not the OGL, but the, uh, uh, what is it? The, the old school system, the OSR, um, the OSR revival. And, and the fact that rifts is still kind of working off of a system that was developed back in the nineties, almost lends itself to kind of leverage that success in the OSR um to, to to kind of grab a hold of that marketplace i i, I think they're in a they're in a great position if i i think i think tmnt will tell if people like yeah. the new updated i think there's a better way to say it layout and uh, and i'm sure you've seen it full disclosure i've seen a lot of a lot of actually a lot of people have seen it because they've shown off pages on, yeah. on our channel before but if yep. if people buy into that I think there will be a resurgence of Palladium because a lot of those old ah, it's Palladium it's just, editing's bad, you can't find anything it's written like as the 1980s, well guess what and as somebody who's seen it like I said I've got my personal quibble with it but ultimately the the layout <sighs> yes I'll just say that, yes <laughs> yeah. I've got to be careful what I say no well, if, the... if... go ahead Tim well, I was gonna say the the um, the new Rifts book that Sean put out um, for Archie that was love it. Yes, I, actually, Titan Robot, great yes. example. Even I looked at the Titan Robotic stuff and said, "Wow, there's an improvement here," and that was without yeah. them telling me anything. Yeah, Titan Robotics was was a bang out was a bang up freaking example of what the new books are going to be. I am one hundred percent behind that because that was. Very well done. The format's great. The content was fabulous. I mean, holy crap, that really, really changed my my view on the the Titan Robotics as a as a as a uh, in in lore universe or a product. That I'm like, because before it was, eh, now it's like that's better than Northern Gun. I sign me up. Uh, 
All right. Um, did I hit all? Of, oh, no. Uh, we just got one in, Michael Mammoth. Thank you for the $10, Michael Mammoth. By the way, there's been a lot of chat going on. There's only so much I can read. We're what? <laughs> like an hour? We're, well, we're an hour and 10 minutes over the longest I want the show to be. And we still have one more question to go. Uh, and I will be, by the way, folks, I will be doing the giveaway tonight. I'm not going to have a full on segment five. I'm going to do the giveaway, though, because you've earned it. You've put in, you've, you've given the, the super chats for it. But that will be after this entire show is over. Um, so, my, uh, Michael Mammoth, for ten dollars thanks again sir uh riffs needs merch it's a crime that there hasn't been a movie an adult animated series and a toy line it's the most merch friendly rpg in existence yeah there's if you talk to kevin and sean we have and i'm sure you may even be one of the people who've asked the questions there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff a lot of people want to do things we'll just leave it at that i mean when you know it's everything from timing to not meeting the intent uh, one of the things i really 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 appreciate about kevin at least in what he said i hope he's honest in this is that he's not going to let you take his ip and go disney that thing or or whatever it's going to it's going to be what he created not what somebody else imagines it to be and that's something i really really appreciate I, let, let's look at an example, and then we'll go on to the next question. Tim and T was a very hot selling game, right? The comics were out. This is the '80s, right? So the comics were out there. It's a hot selling game. People were playing it. And then the cartoon came out, and Kevin's even said the cartoon kidified everything. It was like, oh, nobody wants to be part of that anymore. Oh my god, I'm, I'm too cool for school on this one. Now I didn't, I didn't read the comics. So I didn't know anything about it. Yeah, I knew about the cartoon, but that's after I already started playing. I was like, that isn't the game way I play, you know, because our games were dark even back then. So there's something to be said about, ooh, he's got to have somebody that handles riffs correctly. And I'm not speaking for him. He's never told me this. This is just me talking. I don't think anybody's done that because apparently people have tried to buy the license or have bought the license or something. Computer games, there was a computer game for it. Of course, that was right as the time that that system went... You know, but uh, but people have tried. There are some novels out there, but yeah, we had all. I look. I might not be a riffs player, but I would go watch a a riffs movie written by Kevin. Effectively speaking, uh, that would, was given a movie adaptation. I would go see First Night, even knowing that some asshole next, some person next to me is going to be chewing on popcorn with my misophonia. So I, I would be all in on that. And uh, bear with the awesome deep voices here in the chat. Get hyped. Um, we're not going to have a segment five tonight. Uh, we're I'm going to do the giveaway after we're done with this. And then uh, I've, dude, I've got to go to bed. I've got things to do. So, uh, so we're not going to have a full segment five tonight, but thank you again, Michael Mammoth. Uh, uh, you know, you, you're, you're helping Legion of Myth out. And I just want to remind folks that complain about the new ads for YouTube again, that you, if you're willing to super thank, are you willing to donate through Ko-Fi? I'm willing to turn off the ads. So are we ready for the last question? Okay. So we talked about players a moment ago. And who are we starting with now? I already forgot. Uh, oh, Frank. Frank. Sure. Yeah. Done. Okay. So we talked about players previously. Now we're going to talk about game masters. Yeah. How should new game masters prepare for running their first Rifts campaign, and what should they focus on? I love that you asked this question because it, it's one of the biggest problem sets that I think new game masters, as they try to figure out how to run a Rifts game run, uh, that they come up against. Um, and, and we talked about this in earlier segments. Uh, limit Limit this to the backyard or a familiar setting. That's the easiest place to start. If you live in Germany, figure out something in Germany. If you live in Indonesia, pick your backyard. Okay, There's nothing worse than trying to figure out the cultural implications of how you do things in another setting. Um, th then the second thing I would do suggest is take it back to uh, the year 100 post-apocalypse. Um, currently the setting is at 109. It is super easy for you to start at 100 PA post apocalypse and then to start fiddling around how your characters meet into the greater, uh, muscle movements within the plot. Okay. you got the juicer uprising. You've got the Tolkien war that you can jump into. You've got the minion wars that you can jump into, or you can just start a war with the magic, uh, the, 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 um, the, the magic zone. 
um, or against Psyscape, or you could throw the characters into a specific part of the Coalition War campaign against Free Quebec. Take your pick. That And that's only North America, and that's not taking into account the Pecos Empire, the Vampire Kingdoms, New West, whatever the case may be. Um, so set it in a time period that you are comfortable with. If you want to jump right into the Tolkien War, Bob's your uncle. Have at her. Um, limit your first session. I would suggest limit your first session to the Rifts Ultimate Edition classes and, and, and maybe a few choice books. Like, Maybe you want to get into the Federation of Magic because some of your characters want to talk about magic casting characters. So, okay, they want to do that, go nuts. Um, juicers, you got a guy that wants to play a juicer, he wants to play a mega juicer. Okay, well, you need the Juicer Uprising book. Off you get. Psionics, Psyscape, carry on. Uh, you got a bunch of different classes that are available there. Um, otherwise, the books that you must have, I would suggest that you must have to continue, start and continue with your adventuring. Rift's Ultimate Edition, you need, uh, because it has the main rules, it has most of the psionics within. You need the adventure guide for the hook, line, and sinkers, and it's got a boatload of G. It's a gold mine for a game master in terms of starting rifts. Off you get. You need the Book of Magic because it has every single spell that is available to any of the characters that want to cast a spell. And then you need the source book for Bionics. And by that one, um, it, it gives you every Bionic that's available. To As the resident get... Borg player, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. It also gives you uh, some opportunity to develop certain of the character classes that are the, that are within. So the Bionics book, it's a source book. But it also allows you the Cyber Knights, or sorry, not the Cyber Knight, the City Rat. The City Rat is developed within the Bionics book. It is what it is. Um, and then after that, I would suggest the uh, Conversion Book 1, partly because it allows you to bring in the other games into Rifts, but it also provides you a plethora of different beasts that you can use for encounters and blah, blah, blah. And then Bestiary. The Bestiary is... Like, for lack of a better term, like your monster manual, you have a, a, an absolute buttload of characters and, and, and beasts and monsters that you can use for encounters with your characters. And then after that, you're leveraging your player characters to collaboratively tell a story. Don't get hung up on the rules specifically. Um, if you don't know necessarily what the plus is in terms of the actions or the character skills, make it up as you go and favor the characters in terms of the execution of what they're trying to do. And then tailor the action to what it is that they're doing. So if they want to, if, if they tell you a story, let them tell you a story. Um, <laughs> I see Law Dog again for the the the. Yeah, I, I was going to wait for you to finish. I got to read it as soon as I can, but I'm not going to yeah, interrupt no you. So, so so we'll get there, and, and I'm almost done. Tailor the action for the players uh, and the player characters uh, and the player's personality. If you have a player that is just dead set on being the skill jockey, my God! If you're not developing your adventure to give him something to do. Then, then, then you are. Then I would suggest that you you are failing as game master. You need to not just provide combat encounters. You need to give them NPC encounters, skill encounters, uh, social encounters, so that the the, the non combat NPCs or the co non combat player characters have something to do, and then develop it from there. And guess what? the reactions from your players are going to give you everything you need as a game master in terms of developing the adventures thereafter. They will, whether they like it or not, player characters are almost incentivized to, to give you adventure hooks just in what it is that they do and how they do it. Okay? If they go full-on gonzo, I, you know what? Hey, that character has just gone full-on absolute berserker rage. Well, guess what? 
maybe that develops a hook where somebody looked at that and said, this guy is crazy. Maybe there is a bounty that needs to be developed on this guy or this guy is crazy. Maybe we need to develop a I want to hire this guy because this guy is completely nuts in terms of combat. He should be able to rescue my grandma that got kidnapped. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Pick and choose the cinematic experiences that those players develop and run with it. Okay. The game master in terms of rifts has a multitude of choices available to them. I would suggest that they have more than enough from every session that you play to develop future adventures, not just the next adventure, but the one after that and the one after that as well. Not that you have to railroad your characters into those developments, but holy cow, keep those in mind. Write those down. Scribble them on a sheet of paper. Use them later down. It is the most satisfying experience to all of a sudden, eight sessions down the road, hook back to something they did that they were immersed within. Oh my God, do you remember when my Borg slashed and hacked his way through that entire party of DBs? Well, guess what? Eight sessions down the road, you're the stuck. The DBs remember. <laughs> that DB's boss has come back for vengeance and guess what? That DB's boss can kick your ass. But add in the other characters that can add in some supporting fire. Maybe they can hack into them. Psionic powers, magic powers. Guess what? Now you got an even fight. And now things are going to hit the fan. But the characters, the players, are immersed in the process. Off you go. I, I I can't speak enough about how so, open... so so a lot of that advice isn't just good for rifts it's for like any and no, game and, and and that's the case mm -hmm. rifts provides that open opportunity I would suggest a little bit more so than other game systems more so in the fact that you can do that 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 cinematic experience where you can, you have that free form where a game master can take things and run with it. Whereas other systems are a little bit more restrictive in the way that they develop things. But guess what? The same thing applies to any other system. Build upon your character's reaction, the player's interaction, their immersion, and develop the system, develop the adventures, regardless of the system that you're playing. Rift well, one of the things that, that provides you that, that flexibility. That that uh, you were talking about, you know, starting in 100 PA and, and move forward. I, yeah. I, and, I, and I'm not disagreeing with you, but yeah. just just to give folks out there kind of a, a to not necessarily feel intimidated with the books and the timeline yes. and so forth that they don't want to be is Kevin has been very open about saying he feels that every table is like a little pocket dimension or, or like a sliders dimension or or alternate Absolutely. history or whatever. So you may not even want to have the Tolkien war happen. You may not even want to produce uprising happen. You may want it to happen. So you may want crazy uprising. That's what I'm running. Um, <laughs> Mom and plants for the win. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know, have fun with it. You don't have to stick true to the exact timeline if you don't want to. You're a game master. It's your world. Edit things. If you want to bring in a... Ro you know, I really love that the Coalition had this NGR robot. Bring it in! Yep. You know, just... You don't even have to understand what you're doing. Just know that there are consequences to that. Uh, and they're not always bad either. I'm just saying that uh, that... Now the players might want that thing, or vice versa. Give it to the players, and now the coalition might want that. We talked about that before. Whatever you want to do, you can do, as long as you are a consistent, fair, and reasonable game master. Absolutely. Uh, da, 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 da. Did I ask one of these to... Didn't Malachi start, or did you start? I have written down the... No, you started. Okay. I think I started, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I didn't cross this off. I don't want to ask the same one uh, twice. So... What are some essential game master tips to understand rifts is not meant to be balanced, but can still be fun for all players. Is that for me or for? Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. That's your follow-up question. Sorry. 
read that again. Sorry. So, so what are some essential game master tips to understand that rips riffs is not meant to be balanced, but can still be fun for all players. I think this applies to any game system whatsoever, not just rifts, particularly a game system that preaches challenge ratings. Okay. I, I think challenge ratings in and of itself is a complete fallacy because there is absolutely no way to, to generate and regulate and normalize challenge ratings. It's one of the things I love about rifts. Okay. I can set an encounter with one table and with the exact same group at another table have a completely different way of realizing the encounter. One will go full on combat. We're just going to no screw it full on. We're going in like, like, Hey, diddle diddle straight up the middle. We are going full on combat. What's happened? <laughs> yeah. Whereas the other ones are going like, no, this is stupid. Like, why would we go in and start trading laser shots with somebody that has, they've got 3D6 times 10. I have at best 66. No, I am going to, no, I'm going to retreat. I'm going to go back behind the hill where they can't see me. And I'm going to run like a fool off to one of the tangents so that they lose me and then I can move around in behind them. And hey, if you want to play the ambush game, go ahead. Or if you want to continue with your mission, which is what you might necessarily like, like what you're supposed to be doing, you're supposed to be doing X. The encounter is not part of the problem. Like if you want it to be, go ahead and make it part of your problem. But listen, like balance is a question of the player characters and what the game master presents and more times than not there is an imbalance between the two either it favors the game master or it favors the party and it is up to the party to decide whether or not the balance is in their favor or not and if it's not in their favor then I would suggest that a face on, like a full frontal combat, is not the solution space they should be looking for. But that's not up to me as the game master to decide. What I might do as a game master is leverage a, like, some warning shots, like to say, okay, like they blew up a rock face that you were hiding behind that 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 should make it clear to you that if you were to suck up any of those shots forget about it now what are you going to do are you going to start shooting pew pew at them or are you going to turn around and maybe go around like pick it and bypass like you as a player character figure it out you do you i as a game master will manipulate the scenario to match the adventure that I want to present. If that turns into a total party kill, hey, that that that's a character generated problem. If they start running forward against the mechanoids, I, I there's they, beca so they, I they, beca they become uh well <laughs> the targets of the I mean what's the mechanoid's goal? Wipe out all humans, kill all humans. Exactly. Now if they were to do <laughs> If they were to do the same against a coalition scout patrol with only three dudes, okay, well, that's a different scenario. If they were to do that against an Atlantean uh, slave mission against uh, North America, well, that's an entirely different scenario as well. Um, I, I, it, it depends entirely on what it is that the player characters are going to present. All right. Uh, I need to read the super chat. I almost forgot about it. So uh, it was a $20 one. So I, I should have read it a little bit sooner than this, but here we go. Law Dog says uh, uh, at uh, Francois de Rocher, uh, spot on. This needs to be clipped for all new GMs to have at the ready. That was more about the first part, but I'm pretty sure the second part is the same. Because uh, he he followed up. It's not a super chat, but since he followed up with it, he said, yes, give the skill dudes some action, especially with the Palladium XP system. They can net hefty rewards outside of combat. 
Absolutely. Okay, let's uh, let's bounce down to Timothy Frelli. Mm-hmm. Still awake, sir? Hope you're still awake. We'll, this is the last question for you. You'll be good. Uh, how should new game masters prepare for running their first Rifts campaign, and what should they focus on? Keep the focus regionalized. Do not don't don't be pulling in Robotech. Don't be pulling in uh, heroes. Don't be pulling in fantasy. You know you you start adding and adding and adding it is just going to explode out of your control real fast um heck maybe even start in one of the other systems start with fantasy nothing wrong with that um so uh yeah that's okay well then i got a great follow-up for you what do you think are the key elements to successfully integrating the various genres in riffs for a cohesive and enjoyable campaign not being retarded like I am. Um, the... <laughs> I mean, you know, first step in solving a problem is admitting it, I guess. But uh, <laughs> for the folks out there who actually want some advice, what do you think are the key? <laughs> um, doing it thoughtfully. Um, they have the reason behind it, not just because. Um, for example, uh, having a... Long bowmen from the fantasy world inside the dinosaur swamp kind of makes the kind of makes sense a little bit. Uh, a long bowman could um, he also acquire the new technology and adapt easily. Um, a superhero, you know, that's not out of the realm of possibility in, in this setting, um, but. Definitely not a mega hero. Um, probably not uh, um, a genius either. So, you know, scope it for what you need. Um, and make, make, yeah, thoughtful. And uh, keep it relevant. All right, Malachi, welcome back from wherever it was that you oh, transitioned to cathood. Okay, um, how how should new game masters prepare for running their first Rifts campaign, and what should they focus on? Can you hear me? Yes, can I can. Do? Okay, sorry, computer's running a bit slow there. Um, I am big on keeping it small, keeping it regional. Make get yourself a little village town. Uh, keep it to the core, and maybe one world book. I don't want to go too crazy. Maybe like keep it in America's like Spirit West. Come up with uh, have all the players come from the village or the town. Come up with some small, easy to handle thing like a rescue mission that they can do. Uh, let them do it. Interact with the town, and whatever comes up comes up, and just go from there. They always, I'm always big on keeping your. Oh, your first adventure simple when you're learning a new system or game. So uh, how do you encourage game masters to use consequences instead of limitations for player characters who will just, and we're specifically focusing on the characters here, but uh, the, you know, but the player characters who start believing their own hype. There should, there should be some consequences to most of your actions, especially or player actions, especially when negative. Um, let's say they give the mayor an attitude. They are, you know, it's about rescuing his dog who's been kidnapped. They give the mayor an attitude about it. Well, they come back, you know, maybe the mayor doesn't want to talk to him. Maybe he just has a, some lackey help him out, take care of him, and then doesn't want to deal with them anymore. And they have to get work and adventures in other ways there should always be a consequence to players actions that that are negative okay well i think we finally reached the end of the show except for there's two things left first one is do you guys have any final comments that you want to say based on this question or or these two questions in the segment Uh, anything you want to follow up with each other have any questions comments concerns for each other and then uh we'll move on to the next phase Okay. Not that, can, not that I can think of. The only issue that that, that I think Rifts probably uh, suggests probably differently than other game systems is um, 
individual XPs versus group XP advancement. We, we, we talked about this very, very like along the edges. Uh, now like I mute. Yeah. Some of the D20 systems, they suggest, okay, you should group advance at the same time. Uh, Rifts presents, uh, or Palladium writ large presents, you should develop individual XPs. I am I am much more a uh, an acolyte, if you want to call it that, uh, a devotee of the individual XPs. I much prefer giving individual XPs over group XP advancement, based off of what it is that goes on, particularly based off of rifts and their XP tables, because some of them are are, are significantly different than others. There, there are some that advance much quicker than others. And dependent on what the player is willing to pro provide in terms of immersion, in terms of their uh, actions, in terms of what it is that they present, the story that they present, um, I am much preferable to providing individual XPs in that manner than I would be to say everybody adds one XP, uh, like one level, like everybody goes up a level at this point. I 100% agree with you on that. Yeah. It, it, it's a slight differentiation in, <laughs> in terms of the way that, you know, the Palladium system is presented versus, let's say, the D20. All right. Uh, $10 super chat from uh, Michael Mammoth. Again, thank you for the super chat, sir. Uh, for Francois, the coalition has detected a magical presence. In response, they have destroyed your entire grid square with artillery. <laughs> Roll new characters. That 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 could be a thing. Um, I would probably <laughs> give them the probably chance to try to get there's, away. <laughs> there's there's a probably a slight chance of those characters getting out of the way. I, I it depends entirely on how the the party is is composed. Um, Maybe, maybe not. I I wouldn't wipe them out just an no. artillery strike, but no. but the artillery strike would cause them problems. They would have to try to get yeah. away. It would definitely deal damage, you know, et cetera, et cetera. What are they doing? You know? Yeah, it, exactly. Now, now, is it a creeping barrage or is it like an entire square kilometer or a square mile that just disappears under artillery fire? Yeah, yeah we can play that game. Um, but that's but that's part of the game master's responsibility to identify. Okay, here is the players. They have developed a capability. It is a threat to X, Y, or Z. X, Y, or Z is going to response in a particular manner. How are the players now going to react to that? And and that's kind of the problem. And like in terms of rifts, like like it is wide open. I I am not a fan of total party kill in terms of just artillery grid square disappears. Um, I don't like that, but if the party develops the scenario in terms of the, the cause and effect, and that's the way it happens. Hey, I have no problems playing that, but I would give them a couple of chances to get out of the, 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 the grid square in question yeah. Like a, so Per has a comment here. I, I I partially agree and I partially yeah. disagree with Per here. He says uh CS artillery killing PCs. I feel sorry for that GM for the loneliness he'll feel when his PC's bailing for a reasonable GM. It really all depends on on what led up to that situation, I think. You know, it's that yeah. whole magic lightning bolt from the sky because you made the you know the game master angry. Yeah, that's a that's a piss poor game master. At the same time, if it's a viable military tactic and you decided to let yourself group -doop -doop through the minefield and now you're getting artillery barraged, that's on you. Who we didn't know was here. You didn't obviously you didn't use your skills to find, you know, to figure it out. You know, uh, that yep. in that case, I wouldn't blame. It's like when when Bear ran the 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 illusion sequence with us, and people were like, "Oh my god, dream sequences are stupid." Blah blah blah. Do I like dream sequences? No, they're dumb. But his made sense in how it was set up. So you can look at it on one hand, well, dream sequence, illusion, whatever you want to call it, that's just stupid. Or did it make sense for the time? And it did make sense for the time. And just in in response to some of the questions or the comments that happened. As a, a, a company commander that, that experienced a danger-close artillery barrage 
completely by mistake. It was a mistake in terms of the calculations on the artillery side. Um, we had we had artillery. That round. happens. Yeah. Well, when you're sleeping out in the open and you have artillery that lands within 50 meters of you, um, that 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 shakes that that wakes you the fuck up. Um, and, and you were diving for whatever piece of cover you could find. Uh, thankfully, in our case, we had cement, like we had bunkers and, and cement reinforced bunkers to dive into. Uh, let me tell you, that was a freaking show that I do not wish to ever repeat again. I, I've never been that near, but I've heard some stories from folks where either things went awry or they they were even as far away as they were, and they still felt the uh, the effects from it, you know, uh, from Afghanistan and Iraq. But uh, yeah. I think with that, though, I think I actually read all the Super Chats except for one. So before that one Super Chat, <laughs> before we go into Super Chats, we'll have our panel remind us who they are, what they create, where you can find them on the Internet. So let's start with uh, Francoise, Frank, sir. Who are you, or not who are you, what do you do? But yeah, uh, but who are you and where can people find you online? Okay, so um, I run a Rifts blog at uh, scholarlyadventures.com slash blog um, or just scholarlyadventures.com. Uh, it, it'll get you there. It's the same thing. Um, I, I pay for that website. It's it's a WIG website. So uh, th- there there are no ads involved. There's, there's over 150 different articles in terms of rifts uh book reviews occ reviews and then generally just some things to help out new game masters in terms of understanding the rifts system the palladium system writ large and uh how to develop creating immersive adventures for you and your uh your player group so that you can uh maybe experience something that is outside the d20 system uh, just for kicks and giggles. Um, that being said, um, <laughs> it's, yeah, the 155 barrage. Um, I don't do the uh, YouTube stuff with the exception of that one YouTube video <laughs> that I did. Was, Which was uh, a good introduction. I thought you had a good introduction there. Then there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I, do the, I did the one YouTube video, which was an introduction to my blog. Uh, by all means, I, the, the the link will be in the show notes. Uh, so feel free to come over and take a look at what Scholarly Adventures uh, has for uh, developing your Rifts adventures. Uh, by all means, shoot me a message. Uh, just leave them any message in any one of the 150 plus posts that are available. I will get back to you. All right, and then we're down to Timothy Ferrelli, who is still he's still with us, sir. Who are you? Where they where they find you? And uh, uh, I cannot talk. And what content do you create, Timothy Ferrelli? I am character dice where I make characters, so you don't have to. And if you're looking for online resources for riffs, don't come to me. Don't go to Max. Don't go to Scholarly Adventures because and don't listen to me. so all three. Uh, yeah, go visit each of us, all of us, none of us. Don't listen to me, I'm an idiot. Um, so I'm on YouTube, character and dice, easy to find, maybe. All right, and then finally, and least, <laughs> we have Malachi. I can say he's been on the show probably more than anybody else, maybe. I don't know, maybe Bear has as much as you. I want you to think about that statement for a moment before you, uh, before you finish up with. Uh, uh, <laughs> remind us who you are and why we should care. <laughs> hey, I'm Malachi. Just a guy that enjoys, actually loves the gaming hobby. Got my blog, talking about whatever happens to be on my mind at the time. Come check it out, read it, sub if you want. There you go. All right. Well, let's read the last super chat because it's going to be apropos here in a couple of minutes. Rigged! <laughs> <laughs> this whole live stream was rigged. That's all it was. No, that'll be for when the contest comes up after, which uh, the folks watching live stream will see, but you people watching this on video will not. So uh, let's finish this up here. Uh, again, oh, thank you for... Included? What's that? Are we included in the draw? 
Uh, well, anybody who super chatted or is a member. Okay. So if that's the case, then yes, sir. Uh, if not, uh, sorry. Uh, so what are, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. So this Sunday on RPG Digest, I will be continuing on with Twilight 2000 talking about traveling and then diving into one of the expansions real quickly. I think it's Urban Operations to talk about city combat. Uh, Heathen Dog will be talking about a face rip style game uh, called, is it Terminus? Oh, I have the thingy right here. This one right here. <laughs> yeah, Terminus. There we go. Uh, he looked that over and he said it's a setting. Yeah, what does it say? Setting for race face ripopedia, something like that. I can barely read that. Sorry, it's really small on my screen. But uh, we'll be check diving into that. So if you're a fan of the old Marvel superheroes face rip system, you're going to want to check that out because that adds a little more psychological, not psychological, sorry, uh, cybernetic horror, I think is what he calls it. We'll find out more on Sunday, though. Next Friday, 27th of September, no some rando RPG live stream. I'm sorry, but it'll be the members only live stream where we will talk about, well, stuff that we talk about with members only. If you're a member, you know what it is. If you're not a member, maybe check it out. It is an AMA. It's an ask us anything. And I mean that barring giving you our, you know, social security number and firstborn kid, come on in with any questions, comments, and concerns you've got. So I look forward to uh, talking with folks then. Anything else I have to say? Oh, yeah, of course. It's on the screen right there. If you enjoy this discussion, please like this video. And remember, these folks said where you can find them, but their links are in the description right now. If you have not subscribed, if you've not followed them, um, there's something wrong with you. So fix that. Fix yourself sir or ma'am. And please be sure to subscribe to Legion Myth and all the panelists whose links you can find in the description. And with that, I had a great time to this. Well, you know what? We topped Sean. This is now the longest, longest of these, uh, of this format of the live stream that we've had. But there's a lot of passion. There's a lot of interest, a lot of information to give out. We may have to do this one again. I don't know. But I appreciate uh, all you guys being here. Frank, Timothy, and Malachi, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for your answers. And uh, the audience obviously had a great time. Got a lot of good uh, comments, super chats. And uh, thank the audience for being out there and joining us as well. And I hope everybody has a great week. And can't wait to see you next time.